Good morning, brothers and sisters. I wanted to bring to your attention uh, a wonderful article by our brother Pete Garcia entitled Eyes Wide Shut. I want to read a portion of his article and then I will include the link in the description page for you to read the rest of the article. He brings up a lot of good, insightful comments. I think he's one of the um, better Christian writers out there. He's really good at putting all his thoughts on paper. And so I wanted to just read an excerpt from his article here for you guys. Quote, Believers studied in sound eschatology will not live in fear or perplexity at the increased wickedness and lunacy that is currently taking hold of this world because they will know that this is the way it is supposed to be at the end. It is this way at the end, not because we are doing our jobs, but because God's word already said it would. Things aren't going to get better. The church isn't going to take over the world for Christ. If that were true, then Christ's second coming would be unnecessary. While it is true the gates of hell won't prevail against the church, Matthew 16, 18, that is not the same as saying church is going to win the world over so Christ can return. There is a huge difference between a stalemate and a decisive victory. The victory isn't going to be determined by how busy the church gets in the here and now. The victory will be Christ's alone because only he can bring the kingdom. If the church can win the world over for Christ, then why have we waited 2,000 years to do it? The truth is we can't, nor were we supposed to. The church isn't the kingdom, nor are we building the kingdom here on earth. The kingdom is what Christ ushers in at his second coming. I suppose one of the things that irked me the most about this sermon I sat through was his usage of traditional prophetic charged passages like Titus 2 in Hebrews 10 as talking points, but completely strip the prophetic significance from these verses. Not that this pastor will ever read or listen to my reply, prophecy jargon on the internet. However, I would like to ask him a question. Since you used Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 as your closing scripture for the sermon you preached, what day should we see approaching if we are not supposed to be distracted by looking for this day? I seem to remember Jesus seriously chastising the Pharisees for not being able to recognize the times. As a matter of fact, they missed his birth as well. See Matthew 2 and why they didn't go to see the wise men to see the Christ. If the world is in the mess it's in due to its rejection of the one true God of the Bible, how much more will they be deceived by not knowing what is coming? Put another way, if the world truly knew the coming future, would it still be heading in the direction it's going? So, brothers and sisters, I encourage you to read the rest of this article. Uh, the link is in the description page. And as always, Maranatha.